How's it going YouTube? We are back with some more transactions. Still trying to get caught up here. Before we get started, I have to ask you guys to leave a like and subscribe. It would really help me out. Um, a lot of this is going to be NHL heavy because the NHL went crazy at the draft. And uh, we have one MLB transaction here. So um, obviously I'm going to keep trying to catch up. Uh, there's going to be some more MLB based at the trade deadline. It's not far away. Uh, more uh, NBA as well and NFL. But most of this is NHL. Uh, let's start with the top here. We got the Rangers signing left wing Barkley Goudreau to a six-year, $21.85 million deal. Uh, Barkley Goudreau is more of a power forward kind of guy. He's a younger player. Um, so signing him to a six-year deal um, for some grit is not a bad idea. Gets in on the four check. Could possibly play on the power play if he's uh, more of a forefront net presence standing in that goalie's way. Um, they have a really young team out in New York. Some young talent. Um with some stars as well like Artemi Panarin and Adam Fox who just won um, the Norris so uh they're trying to put it together over there so this um trying to secure guys long term is uh, makes a lot of sense for them one of the bigger trades here um Seth Jones gets traded from Columbus to Chicago with the 22 second and the 2021 first which was the 32nd pick of that draft um in exchange for Adam Bockfist a conditional 2022 first a 2021 first, which was the 12th, a 2021 second, which was the 44th. So a big time trade right at the draft. Seth Jones being possibly a top 10 defenseman, depends who you ask. I'd probably put him in the top 10, uh, as well as, you know, uh, sending a young defenseman like Adam Bockfist, a young, talented defenseman like Adam Bockfist um, with two firsts. So this is a, it was a blockbuster trade here. Um, whenever one of the best players out of position gets moved, it's always a big deal. And uh, Jones is is one of those guys. Uh, Chicago looks like they're trying to put it together for one last run here uh, with Kane and Taves before they have to tear it down again and run with um, Kirby Doc and um, what's his name, Debrinket, players like that. They still have their old um, their older guys like Kane, like I said, Kane and Taves. Uh, I believe Duncan Keith is gone now, but um, you know they still have those two guys. You put other players around them like Doc, uh, Debrinket. Now Jones, you sure up that blue line a little bit uh, with a goaltender, and you might have yourself a playoff team there, possibly a Stanley Cup contender. Who knows? And then following that, Chicago extends Seth Jones to eight years, seventy-six million dollar deal. Um, that's a lot of coin, uh, over nine million per season. But I think he's well worth that money. A uh, great two-way defenseman, great on defense. Uh, chips in with some goals, some points on offense. Uh, power play, penalty kill, he'll play all situations. I think it's well worth the money to sign him to that kind of to that kind of deal for that amount of time. He's not that old. I believe he's in the mid twenties now, uh, 26, 27, maybe twenty eight, but still that is not um, uh, incorrect amount of time for him to sign. Uh, I think it's a great deal. I think Chicago is going to get their money's worth out of him. Uh, I can't really have, find any negatives with Seth Jones being on the on the Blackhawks. To our only MLB trade on this video, uh, pitcher Rich Hill gets traded for uh, Tommy Hunter and Matthew Dwyer. Or Dyer. I forgot to include their positions. I apologize for that. But I don't know too much about them. I know Rich Hill, though. He was a Dodger. He pitched in the 2017 World Series for the Dodgers, and he pitched well. Um, I believe he pitched on the 2018 World Series as well. He pitched well in both of those series. Um, he really... You know, he's an ageless wonder kind of thing, too. His curveball is consistent. Uh, that low 90s velo is not very much, but he makes it work with that curveball. Um, changes angles on you. Uh, he's really been effective for Tampa. He's going to, to the Mets. They're trying to shore up their, their pitching staff and try to make a push for the playoffs. Uh, looks like the division is pretty weak, so it looks like they will make it. But um, barring that nothing changes out there in the East. But, um, you know, they're trying to shore it up, tighten things up because... It's a very, very tough National League right now. The National League West is incredibly tough. If you're a wild card team, you're facing one of them. And, um, you know, they could face each other and knock one of the... <laughs> the National League West will probably handle each other before they have to face any other division, which is unfortunate, but uh, it's just the way it is. Um, the Mets will probably face whoever wins the Central, whether it's the Cubs, whether it's the Cardinals, whether it's the Reds, whether it's the Brewers. It looks like the Brewers right now, but... Um, and that's a tough matchup, so they need all the pitching they can get, so which makes this move extremely understandable. Back to the NHL, which is where we will stay. Uh, Connor Garland, right wing Connor Garland, and Oliver Ekman-Larsen, two stars in Arizona, 
get traded for a 2022 second Antoine Roussel, Louis Erickson, Jade Beagle, and a 2021 first, which was the ninth overall pick. Uh, this looks like a cap dump for Vancouver, um, and then they threw in the ninth overall pick. Uh, Louis Erickson was not worth his money. Jay Beagle, he's not a top player. Depth maybe, Roussel's depth as well. So mainly the main pieces for Arizona here are the 2021 first, which is the ninth overall pick, and the second for Connor Garland and Ekman Larson. Um, Ekman Larson has a pretty you know substantial contract, and Garland was, uh, I believe, going into his free agent year, so the chances of him staying in Arizona were not very good. But they're both extremely talented players. Connor Garland is a small guy, but he's a sniper. He's creative on offense. Uh, he'll put 20 goals in the net in an 82-game season. Uh, maybe more than that, maybe even 30. Uh, Ekman Larson plays a nice two-way game as well. Uh, his defense could be a little bit better, but he's really good on the power play. And, um, you know, it's kind of hard to find a time where you don't want him on the ice. At least from what I've seen as a, as a Kings fan watching them play Arizona, that dude always seems to be on the ice in times where um, he needs to be. And uh, he makes the plays that he needs to make, and Vancouver gets him now. They're trying to make a push. I think that um, if I was Vancouver, I probably wouldn't have traded that ninth overall pick. They're not really in a position yet where they can say that they're a contender and they should be trading their picks, considering that they did miss the playoffs. But uh, they do get some stars here. They don't really have time to wait for another um, developing prospect, being whatever that ninth overall pick turned out to be. The draft already happened, but I didn't keep up too much with it other than what the Kings drafted. Um, but uh, they don't really have time. They have guys like Pedersen, Besser. Um, they're not getting any younger. I know they're really, really young guys, but you know Quinn Hughes and stuff. They have they have a good roster on paper. It's just a matter of putting that putting the puck in the net, keeping the puck out of their net for them. And um, that looks like they're adding some pieces to really make a push. I don't know if we're going back to the normal Pacific Division, or are we staying with you know the Canadian Division and stuff like that. Uh, the COVID season, but we'll see where that goes. But um. I really like that trade if you're um, Vancouver. I just don't like that they gave up that first. They clear all the cap with Louis Eckerson, that ugly contract. They still have to pay, pay Ekman Larson, but you know, Ekman Larson is much more worth his money than, than uh, Louis. Louis Eriksson is. Uh, St. Louis gets a sniper in Pavel Buchnevich in exchange for Sammy Blay in a second. Uh, Sammy Blay is a young player, a young playmaker. But, um, you know, they don't need time. Their St. Louis is a team that should be contending, and they don't need to wait for a, a playmaker, a center playmaker, to develop into um, a star. Uh, not to say that he won't, but um, Pavel Buchnevich is a proven sniper. He's going to give you 20 goals. Um, the Rangers get another young young forward to go along. Maybe they play him with Lafreniere. Maybe they play him with, um, you know, whoever else on that team, whoever else on their young stars. But uh, I think... You know, this is a, a good trade for both sides. I think uh, they both get what they're looking for. A veteran sniper for St. Louis and a young center and, and the Rangers with that draft pick as well. Uh, hard to say anything about either either side winning or losing there. So I think it's a very good trade both sides. And then the final trade that we have on this board, Philly gets Rasmus Ristolainen, another, you know, good defenseman, a solid defenseman. Uh, I would probably possibly say an elite defenseman, but... Um, you know, they get Rasmus for Stalin in exchange for Robert Hag, a 2022 second, and the 2021 first rounder, which was the 14th. Uh, Buffalo is in a weird place right now. They look like they're going to start another rebuild, but they kind of never got out of the first one. Um, Eichel might be on his way out, and if Eichel leaves, then they're probably going to have to start all over again. And um, Buffalo fans are probably ready to, you know, riot over there because they even with all the top tier talent that they have picked up and drafted it. Um, you know, Jeff Skinner had a good season, but now he's not working out. Kyle Akpozo's contract didn't work out. Eichel's been great, but you know, Reinhardt didn't really pan out. Uh, Middlestat hasn't reached his potential yet. Uh, Rasmus Dahlin has been good, but he had a, a little bit of um, a step back season last year. They haven't figured out their, their situation between the pipes. And it's just, you know, they haven't, I, at that point, you have all this talent, but nothing to ever put to the ice. Like, nothing ever shows in the ice. And I think you have to blame ownership at that point. I don't even think it's management. I think it's ownership. Um, you know, they, they're not, for some reason, they're not winning games. They've gone through a bunch of coaches, a bunch of general managers, but they still haven't put it together yet. And if they have to start another rebuild, I think they might have to figure out, um, you know, something else here. Because um, you lose Rasmus versus the line, which was uh, a pick prior to Jack Eichel, I believe. 
So um, they were young young studs coming up together, and um, now you're 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 moving them out, and you might move Eichel out as well. So Buffalo really needs to get their um, get their stuff together. They do get a young, talented defenseman, a highly regarded defenseman, in Robert, Robert Hag. They did get the 14th overall pick as well for Ritz line, and so they did get their money's worth for him here in this trade. It's not like they got fleeced, but um, I feel like this is still a step backwards instead of forwards for a team that looks extremely talented on paper. And that's going to do it for this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe, comment what you guys think about these transactions, and I will see you guys next time.